Hello and welcome to Two Beers Till Takeoff. My name is Phil and today we have two special guests joining the podcast. The first guest, he is looking a little lazy today. He is the Two Beers Till Takeoff official Brazilian football correspondent and head writer at Nishi Football. Welcome to the show, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a shame that went out of business so that was a great idea <laughs> and a new face to the podcast cracking intro back in his day he was a center back for Colchester Football Club and now he is the mayor of Bognor Regis England welcome to this show Brendan aka Don Kilvo whoop, whoop. Royal Britannia what is going on, boys? How long did it take you to find coaches? <laughs> <laughs> Just really look at like the uh, lowest league and the bottom team. <laughs> you know what? That would be one hell of an achievement to me. That's 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 that thing. First of all, where is Colchester? I went up. It's in the. It's in like the the east. It's like East Anglia. We went there on an away day once. Portsmouth drew two all with Colchester. It was a fucking terrible ground. They had about ten fans in there as well. East Anglia is like that, just that sort of area of England, though, isn't it? It's like the, the arse of England that no one ever goes to. You just sort of drive past. Yeah, Brendan, tell us a bit more about your Colchester career. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I was touted for big things. Slight Mitch Richards, I burst onto the scene, but injury, knee, ACL, would, would you know, I'm out. And I know that you had a lot of offers uh, early in your career because I know that there's Manchester was after you, Liverpool was after you, but why did you decline those uh, offers for Colchester. Is the weather so Somebody's much better Colchester. in Colchester? Yeah, it's like a mini tropical climate. Natural botanical gardens. I really like how... I really like how he's North Americanized these teams. Manchester, Colchester. <laughs> like, which Manchester, bro? You've got to narrow it down for us. <laughs> hey, before we get into soccer talk here, I got to talk to you guys about something that actually happened in North America. Something that happened in Grand Falls, so where in my hometown... So I got, a, I got a text the other day and somebody said, there's a bear in town. So on the main street in Grand Falls, there was a fucking tree and a, there, there was a bear in a tree. So Canada was pretty fucking intense. Shit. Like what, what yeah. kind of bear were we talking? It was a black bear and they had to shoot it with like a tranquilizer gun. And then these guys with like a tarp tried to catch it but it like definitely didn't do anything the guy just like straight went down on his face like the bear was probably fucked he probably woke up and was like man my face is fucked probably woke up and was like what a night he, he, yeah, he probably happened, felt uh... like how sid feels right now <laughs> <laughs> recovering recovering uh, just about can you imagine if that happened in in like in england we found a bear in a town we'd evacuate half the country i think Nobody would know what to do. You, you just go to the pub until it all blows over. <laughs> to the Winchester. Yeah. Anyways, boys, you, you, you guys are getting, you, you must be pretty excited. Uh, the World Cup's coming soon. And I, I guess before we get into talking about World Cup, I want to talk about, you know, you guys are from England and England being the inventors of football. I want you guys to illustrate to the listeners what it feels like when your team wins the World Cup. What are the parties like? Tell us your experience, how that, how that was. Wow. <laughs> wow. Just... <laughs> are, we, are we getting paid to pop with this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't realize it was going to be a roast, eh? But, no, but like, at least you guys must have won like a Euros, no? Oh my <laughs> fucking God, this guy. <laughs> 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 Joe, on a, on a my, serious my, my great granddad said that night in 66 was was lit yeah on a serious so, note my um my uh, mother was born in 67 so i've often thought about asking my grandfather what it was like but i think that story would be too heartbreaking so i'm gonna i'm gonna brand <laughs> i'm gonna brand the england football team just so for the canadians listening that you're like i don't fucking know what soccer is so England are the equivalent of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Last time the Toronto Maple Leafs won was 67. So you guys are very similar. A lot of promising team, but just never, they just never can make it. So you guys are the, the Maple Leafs. But is this accurate? <laughs> this is our year. Yeah. That's what's Anyways, last year. So, so I guess in this episode, we're going to give you some, some insights. So for people who, you know, are, you follow football or you don't follow football. 
this is the perfect episode for you because we're going to give you all the information who we who we think will win the group and also we're going to leave you with a couple bets so stick around till the end because i'm I'm excited for the bets because i'm ready to make some money so what we'll be doing is sit in brendan because there are experts they're the experts for for the podcast uh, uh, a football podcast right so they're the experts and they're going to be alternating picking who's going to be the winner of the group so i guess we can start off here for so for the people listening on youtube uh we're going to share here just a graphic of the teams the groups all right boys so who wants to take the group a start us off i mean mine's con we both know we're going to disagree on this yeah <laughs> yeah but away, start us off away. as right, the newcomer I'll- yeah, I'll start start by upsetting you. So, I mean, generally speaking, I think most people will go with Netherlands. So, so, so yeah, I guess the World Cup. we can maybe just say that for the people who don't know, Group A is Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, and the Netherlands. Yeah, the host nation group, host nation Qatar, who fully deserve to be hosting this most prestigious of sporting events. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Netherlands, cl- clear favourites in that group. Uh, say they're 14 to 1 to win the entire thing. But um, that's not where my money is. I feel, I feel like the, the, the opening game, you've got Senegal versus Netherlands. It's their opening game. That's just, they're going to stink up the place. It's going to be, it's, there's nil-nil written all over it. Wow. Uh, I've, got, I've got Senegal to, to absolutely obliterate Qatar and Ecuador. And they literally go through on the on the goal difference over Netherlands. So I mean, the fi- the final sort of standings in that group for me is Senegal, Netherlands, uh, Ecuador, and then Qatar. Qatar, by the way, I feel like they're going to absolutely smash uh, South Africa's record for at least goals scored by a host nation, which I think currently stands at three. But is I'm it possible to get zero. negative goals? <laughs> We'll find out. <laughs> Anything's possible. The shit, like, like, what point of I, that do you I'm disagree f- with most? I've got Senegal going out with two points. Four. Wow. Sadio Mane? I think their, mid- their, their midfield is very, very weak. Sadio Mane is coming in off an injury. Yeah, I but think, sure. um, I, I can never put it. I can never pronounce his name very well. The Kulu Bali guy who plays for Chelsea. Kulu Bali is also coming off an injury. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but you've also got like Mendy. Also coming off an injury. Mendy, other Mendy? Yeah, Edward Mendy's not even, Edward Mendy's not even number one choice. Or are you talking about Nem plays Mendy? Yeah, yeah, Leicester Leicester player. player. Uh, Idrissa Gay, I mean. Yeah, okay. They've even recruited a French man up top. Yeah, he's old though. He's, he's, uh, he's old, he's old and slow, Idrissa Gay. This is, he, he also did his ACL, I think. So I, I don't I don't rate the Senegal side. I think they're even going to drop a point to Qatar. <laughs> I think that's where Qatar are getting their ball from. Wow! Do you, think they're, getting, do you think they're getting a goal, or uh, what? Do you think that's a nil nil? Uh, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I think because there's, there's going to be a couple of dodgy refereeing decisions or something like that. I don't see them being allowed to go home with nothing. Or oh, they're, they're already home, but yeah. No, Joe, sure, you raised about so, the point. Yeah. I've never and really thought about the officials being in Qatar. Like, how dodgy is it going to be? Do you remember South Korea in 2002? Host nations always, always get the advantage. I was nine, wow. so not really. What are the odds for Qatar to, to so, win yeah, the group? Yeah, Senegal with two points. Qatar to win the, to win <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, to win, to win the whole thing, they're five, only 500 to one. I think that's such a short odds for, for Qatar. Bet the house, you're here to hear first. <laughs> Don't do that, guys. Yeah, so, so <laughs> please. It, it's it seems like it's one of those groups that it's gonna, like, it's just from an outside looker, outside looking in perspective, it seems like it's gonna be Netherlands and Ecuador or Senegal, uh, that's going through. Qatar kind of like we're all saying Qatar yeah. kind of sucks. Yeah, and it's gonna be one of those three. Uh, so now moving on to Group B, Sid, can you lead us off and give us? So Group B is England, Iran, USA, and Wales. A very interesting group politically, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 
Yeah, I mean, the politics is going to be more interesting than the football because every game in this group is going to be nil-nil or one-nil. It's literally the four most offensive teams in the tournament. The, the, the most offensive? It, it's going to be defensive. Defensive, defensive. okay. There's not going to be many goals in there's not going to be many goals in this group whatsoever. Wow. I yeah, I and I can see a, f a few draws. I've I've got on my bracket England top in the group with 5 points. Over big. But only 5. I've got Wales getting 5 points as well. And I think it'll probably just be a case of goal difference. I think we might be one ahead of them or we might score one more than them, but it, there's going to be nothing between it. For Wales it's going to be playing us is going to be like their cup final so they're going to be up for that and that's why i think they'll get a point against us yeah they're not that talented of a side but they do have gareth bale who will decide at least one game in this tournament you give him a free kick and you might so, fucking score a goal right well that that that's what i'm thinking so I'm, I'm taking them to beat the us in the first game who are pretty weak as a side we saw we saw that in the Concacaf qualifying canada finished first uh, this is quite a piss for us team yeah, yeah, Bale has got history, is not he? And reasonably comfortable, you know, in these major tournaments. Uh, yeah. I say major tournaments in the I, Euros. And it, <laughs> and Iran have just reappointed Carlos Quires, who's a super defensive manager, and they have a track record of being frustrating to play against. So I don't. I, I, I basically, if you're not invested emotionally in one of these teams, I wouldn't watch any of the games from this group. Oh, they're, but, they're usually yeah, dead, England, dead, England dead will just England will probably just edge it because we've got a few a few good players around the squad. How'd you rate that to Ramey that Iran have got up top? Yeah, Obafemi Martin said he was the best Asian player, like better than Sun. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. Has he not seen Sun? So yeah, that's a nice that's a nice compliment to give the lad. Probably he's a he's a friend of his. He is indeed. It's not, uh, it's not correct. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. So, so you've got England so, and Wales yeah, moving I, forward. I, yeah. And, and the, I got to ask the Don, what, what is, what is your take? Obviously you think being from Wales that will, no, <laughs> that England and Wales Whoa. are going to be going forward, right? No, Joe, you know what? I think this Wales squad has only got worse since the Euros. Only got worse. And Bale was old then and he is so much older now. Yeah. I mean, you, we saw it at, when he was at Spurs. <laughs> actually he could he could barely run he did score a couple of goals uh, a couple of good goals admittedly and now he's uh now he's just on a jolly in the u.s but i i you know what i fancy the u.s to pip him to it if they do Shit. it's gonna be only just but and uh wow. yeah i think the usa will pick up second so i mean they've got the pulisic these... can not they it's a lebron james soccer <laughs> You guys talked that, that, you know, like that there can be some shady business with, you know, host nations, but what about like future host nations, right? The, the U S side is getting the next world cup. Could they potentially them going a bit further will sell the, the next world cup for, uh, 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 a population that doesn't necessarily religiously watch football. I, should I take I my, my, my tin hat too off far into conspiracy. <laughs> I would take the tin hat. Off I don't point. feel like the, I, don't the, the, I mean, I don't see the US getting any favors. Yeah, the USA don't tend to have a great rep in the Middle East. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Should we move on to Group C? Let's go to Group C. So Group C has Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. So the Don, kick us off. What are your thoughts? I mean, for me, there's only one winner. It's it's got to be Argentina, isn't it? Messi, uh, you know, they've, uh, they're unbeaten in 35 games, Argentina. It's absolutely ridiculous. They, uh, absolutely destroyed Italy in the, uh, the finalissima, however, however you want to pronounce that. They, I think they picked them by like 3 0. <laughs> and, uh, um, I don't really think Italy wanted to be there though. Well, that game, this, this can be it's glorified friendly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they've got that. Obviously, the likes of Di Maria, he's getting old, but then they've got, uh, more sen so, uh, like solid center, center back than uh, they've had in previous tournaments. I mean, just Romero by himself, an absolute man wall. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just me talking as a Spurs fan, but I yeah, I see him absolutely tearing oh, that up. I like I like Romero. Yeah, yeah, he's a good player. He's he they seem to have really liked him there, which is surprising. But um, 
they don't tend to like defenders in Argentina. But yeah, I've got them topping it with nine points. I think they'll absolutely coast that group. And uh, for me, the second place, I mean, you've got a Poland team, which has just been getting uh, worse and worse. They've got Lewandowski, who's absolutely a phenomenal striker up top. And Chesney, who also, you know, he's not a bad goalkeeper either. But in the middle, what have you got? you got absolutely no one bar Matty Cash, a man who I don't think he even had been to Poland when he uh, agreed to play for him. I don't even think he still speaks Polish. No, like, he <laughs> but I think, no, he doesn't. Uh, yeah, I think Hervin Lozano from Mexico, he's going to do bits. I think he's going to see him through. And he's a uh, 250 to one to be top goal scorer, by the way. I think the uh, outside chance. Wow. Brave. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Big, uh, big squad news for Argentina as well is that Dybala's fit because that changes the look of their front line a little. Yeah, well, I mean, they've well, selected. I, I say just still want to make injured, sure I but... understand this. I just want to make sure I understand this because I've been in England and I've noticed that you guys say that, like, you know, you see a hot girl and you're like, oh, she's fit. Are you saying that he's a good looking guy or? I mean, he is. <laughs> dude, dude, Google it. <laughs> no, fucking man rocking. I'm saying, I'm saying that he's a. He's recovered from his injury. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Cause I know that he's healthy. He's off the tomato, table. tomato. Right. All right. Yeah. But he is handsome. <laughs> <I'm not gonna laughs> <lie. laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, Dybala being in that team makes him, makes him look seriously strong. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. Um, I do, I do, I do think though, Mexico can't keep going out in the round of Mexico. <laughs> so I think their, 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 their run is probably over with that. Just for anyone who didn't get that, Mexico have gone out in the round of 16 in the last five tournaments. That's wow. Every single time they've come second in the group and then gone out. You think their time's up the now? Round. Yeah, I think they've run out of road. I think Poland will. They've got Peter Zelensky as well, Poland. There's a few good players in that Polish team. The Ukrainian person. Not right in Saudi Arabia. So I've got them coming second. <laughs> I haven't got Saudi Arabia picking up a point. Uh, Actually, have I? No, I haven't. Saudi Arabia, I think, are one of the only teams I've got picking up no points. Wow. So interesting. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I was going to throw Poland over Mexico in one of my bets, but you actually, Brendan actually made me take that out because I thought about that, that, you know, they're getting older. And I've also heard that, you know, I think we were talking about this a little bit before the podcast is that Mexico, like I watched a lot of the CONCACAF games and Mexico was an absolute, like yeah. they were terrible in CONCACAF. But I've read that they 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 show up in the, in the, the big games, right? They show up when when it matters in the World Cup historically. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, much to detriment to our our viewing. But what are you gonna do? Future host nation as well. So <laughs> yeah, they might get a couple of decisions. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's get to Group D. The so Group D has France, the past World Cup champions. Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia. So I guess the first question I have for you guys is I know that there's a history of teams winning the World Cup and then the next World Cup not doing so well. Do you guys think that that's the case? Yeah. No, I can't bring myself. I've, I've entertained this idea a lot of France just tanking, but I can't bring myself to say that it will happen despite the fact that history says it might. I so right. wish. Because they are... They're, very weak group. Their, their squad is just... Their squad is just stacked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, they're, they're going to they're gonna be... They're going to be leaving players on the bench playing no minutes that would walk into some of the other teams that you might talk about winning it. Wow. The only team that can stop France winning this is France, but they will stop themselves at some point. I'm not saying they're going to win it. Yeah. I just, I just think they'll win this group. Are, are they yeah. favoured to win? No, Brazil, Brazil yeah, yeah, I yeah. think France are third favourites. Yeah, France are at 15 okay. to 2. Brazil are 4 to 1. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't, I don't think is a bad, is a bad price if you can look past the, like, mm -hmm. what's probably going to be some in-house fighting. Because did you hear, um, Paul Pogba apparently put a curse <laughs> on Kylian and Mbappe, like a Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. But Paul Pogba is now injured and not in the squad, so maybe they won't be fighting about that. But Mbappe doesn't like Benzema. Did he take the Benzema Did he take like the Mbappe, spell off? Though? As far as I'm aware. Well, I think the spell's still on, so we'll see how that. Yeah, guys. That yeah, I wish they but, could go out. Basically, but... it's not going to happen. Rather, rather than rather than speculating on a 
who's going to who's going to cause the problems in that camp. What's most important is their first choice midfield isn't going. Pogba and Kante uh, and, and Kante are both are both yeah, out. both injured, which me leaves them playing like Adrian Rabiot and that uh, Tichoumani from Real Madrid. I got. They might play Cameron Vanga. It's but it's either either way. It's an inexperienced, significantly less fierce looking midfield. Yeah, they got uh, so they got Gwen Doozy in got there as win. well. Yeah. You know? do, do you really? Is that the kind of guy you see winning a World Not Cup? Not slightly, but when you've got Benzema, uh, Benzema, Inzy Koeman, Dembele, Giroud, Griezmann, Mbappe, and Nkunku as your choice ahead of them, like Nkunku is quality. What are you gonna do? <laughs> but that's the thing. They've got goal. They've, they've got goals in this team. Mm. Like regardless of where you see them going out, or even if you see them winning it, Mbappe to be the Golden Boot winner is is, is obviously a pretty logical bet. Ten to one. Yeah, he's going to score goals, and this team is going to score goals. But. Yeah, I've, I've, I know a lot of people like Denmark as a dark horse for this tournament. Um, I just think that team is probably a little bit overrated. So many people are talking about them being a dark horse that I actually don't think they're going to go very far now. Wow. Because I think they come second. I think they come second in this group because they are much better than Australia and Tunisia. Yeah. And then I, I, I was even entertaining Andreas Cornelius at 100 to 1 for Golden Boot because I think if they decide to start him up top, he might score a couple of goals. He scored a couple in the last round of international fixtures. But yeah, I think they lose to France, which means they come second in the group and they go out in the round after that. Australia and Tunisia are pretty much non entities for me. I don't see either of them doing anything of relevance in this tournament. Well, no, I think, I think you're right. I was uh, reading something earlier, actually, you said about this Australia's star player, uh, uh, Arjun Prustic. And all they could say about him was that he lacked standout star quality of Mark Viduka, Tim Cahill, and Harry Kiel. So if that's the nicest thing you can say about someone's star player, then doesn't doesn't bode well. I read I read that, I think the <laughs> other day, which was interesting. I looked at their lineup. They they've got a few semi household names in there that have played like either for either in either in England for a little bit or up in Scotland for a bit, like uh, like Lecky and players like that, but. As you said, it's not as good as previous Australia teams. No. They were very, very lucky to get to the tournament anyway. It wasn't a playoff, they, um, right? Probably would have offered more. There, they beat Peru in a playoff on penalties. Right. Peru probably would have offered a little bit more entertainment to the to the tournament, to be honest. But the, the anyway, tallest team, you don't they, make, you they don't would have been the to tallest be team in the tournament, no? <laughs> Fucking good job, it's not a basketball tournament. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, that's, that's what I've got. France, Denmark. Brendan? Yeah, France, Denmark. I don't think you can really see it any other way. As you say, Tunisia. I've got Tunisia finished ahead of Australia, but none of them are going to offer much against Denmark and uh, and France. Yeah, listen, I I, I see this group, and like as a person who doesn't know that much about football, it's a cakewalk of a like it's France, Denmark, easy. On to the next group E. We've got Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. What a fucking group! Holy shit. The, this is a pretty intense one. This, yeah, this is outrageous, this group. Um, yeah, you know, due, due to the difficulty of this group, we've got Costa Rica are now the favourites to be the lowest golf, uh, golf scoring team at the tournament. And they've got, really? you know, they've got a history of these major tournaments. They're at eight to one to be the lowest scoring team. And it's just, it's because, you know, you've got like, that's a cracking, that's a cracking bet. And I'll explain why. And, uh, I think it's saying to boost up your, boost up your accumulators, just whacking them on. Cause I see it's either them or Qatar, to be honest. But for me, I mean, I wrestled with this, but I've, I've got Spain winning that group. I feel like they're going to start the tournament quicker than Germany do. Personally, I don't think I've got them going as far, but I think they're going to start it quicker. And uh, with Al Alvaro Morata at top, 50 to 1 to be his top goal scorer. But with them top, there's only one other really, and it's, it's Germany going for second place. Sorry, Japan, but you've got a lot of uh, players with European uh, experience, but no, you're not going to touch Spain and Germany, I don't think. I think this Japan side is horseshit. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Um, I, I was looking through their squad the other day, and they've actually left their two best forwards at home. I assume to accommodate more midfielders, because they've decided they're just going to sit back. And just this tournament, which out. is why I think Costa Rica to score the least amount of goals is a great bet, because Japan games are probably going to be low scoring. And Costa Rica probably won't trouble Spain or Germany. So they could quite easily score zero. That's sound advice. Across those three games. 
Yeah. But Japan, Japan have taken three forwards, right? The three forwards between them have got eight international goals. Is that a lot? You back them in it. <laughs> that's that, that's only eight more than me and you. <laughs> but not more than Brendan, though. Um... <laughs> but not more than Brendan. No, I couldn't include no, him in that. No. Well, you Did can Colchester make it to the yeah. Champions League? Um, Almost. We're about 280 <laughs> places behind. Do you, want, do you want me to delve into where I think Spain and Germany are going in this? Yeah, I, I think that's an interesting point. Uh, you, we, we were just talking about a bet before the, the, before the podcast. I think that's definitely a good one to, uh, to, to start with, yeah. Well, yeah. I, the, the bet I am taking, which is paying fives, is the winner of the tournament to come from Group E, which basically means for your money you get Spain and Germany. There are two reasons this is a great bet. Number one is because for me, I think they're two, the two best, or at least two of the best teams in this tournament. And because they come from the same group, regardless of what order they finish in, they can't meet again till the final. So you're guaranteed to have two horses in this race for, uh, for as long as possible. They won't meet earlier than that. They can't knock each other out. Whereas if you take yeah. any other bet, your teams could end up knocking each other out, right. which makes you sad. But I have got Germany top in this group only on goal difference, though, because I think they'll draw their game. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise so, me. Which gives them both seven points. Um, the Germany team is very, very good. Their midfield of Goretzka and Kimmich is going to be dominant against pretty much every midfield other than Spain's because Spain's midfield is also awesome. Germany have a lot of goal scorers. Jamal Musiela, the, the young lad at Bayern Munich, who should have been playing for England, but unfortunately isn't, is going to be one of the breakout stars of this tournament and is definitely somebody to keep an eye on. Do you not think, though, that... And their back line is... Do you not think that they're going to spend most of their time protesting LGBTQ rights out there rather than playing football because it's Germany? Well, if they do, maybe Costa Rica are going to win the whole thing on the lunch. <laughs> Costa Rica to win the whole thing. I mean, they're only a thousand to one. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't think they're going to waste any time protesting as well. So that's good value for money. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe there'll be off field distractions, maybe, but I, I don't see it causing them any problems. I think these are two teams. To, I don't like the Spain squad that, that Luis Enrique has picked, but he did come out today and announced that he's the best coach in the world. <laughs> Who's so, going to argue with that? I don't really want to disagree <laughs> with that kind of arrogance. <laughs> like the confidence though no yeah well that that spreads doesn't it yeah which is what i'm thinking I, so i've got my spain jersey on anyway classic yeah. fabregas before he was wearing number four yeah got this off some typo <laughs> but yeah i'm back in i'm i'm back in spain anyway i think they're going the distance they because if they come second in this group their draw is very easy as well my bracket would put them up against belgium which is a tough game okay but then they get switzerland then they would play england and then they would play Germany. Wow, so Spain would That's beat England in this run. Switzerland, so you're... I take my heart out of it when I do the bracket. Wow, every, I, I love uh, every tournament when I take the bracket. That, that means that people can ride with bracket. Sid yep. because Sid is not... He doesn't take the hometown discount. He he just... I, I love that, buddy. That's that's great. I can't say I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to win. But Britain's, but yeah, all his bets are just England to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's even got England winning the games we're not playing. 100%. Them. They gave me good odds. What are you going to do? <laughs> um, I'm Sid, you said that you'd have, uh, you got them after being Belgium, uh, meeting Switzerland. So I'm assuming that you think either Portugal aren't winning their group or they're not getting out of the round of 16. I actually, I actually haven't got Portugal winning their group. And even if they do, I think Switzerland beat Portugal or Uruguay. Okay. Fair enough. Before, I mean, we'll get yeah. to it when we get to group G. Before we get, uh, before we get to group up. H. Let's talk about Group F, which is Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. And I'm just putting this up there that if Canada ends up getting out of this group and winning the World Cup, we're going to call it the Soccer World Cup from now on. Just saying. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> I th I'll do that. That's fine. <laughs> I, th I think if Canada win it, you should buy every one of the listeners a beer. I, I, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so, so just interestingly enough, before we get to Group F, I, I just do you guys know why it's called soccer? I don't know if I want to because they wear socks. 
So you know what? I, I, I did a bit of research for the podcast because I knew that I couldn't really contribute much to the games. But I can tell you this. So students at o University of Oxford in the 1880s distinguished between the sports of rugger, which was rugby football, and a soccer, which was association football. The latter term was further shortened to soccer and the name quickly spread, spread beyond the campus. At the time, people were also using the term football, but then Americans started calling the, term, the, the game of football soccer. And because you Yanks don't like the, Engli the, the Americans. Oh, no. Yanks don't like the English. No, I, I fucked up. <laughs> okay. uh, let, let me redo that. Because you, you English don't like the Yanks. You guys oh, that was spot on. abolished the term oh. soccer, and now it's football or football for you. It's soccer for North deals. America. So, long story to say, blame the nerds at Oxford for the term soccer, not us North Americans. Sure answer. God save no. the Queen is all I've got to say to that. <laughs> but anyway, sit. Take us into Group F. So we've got Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. I really, really, really wanted to say that I can, that Canada are going through. Appreciate that. I really oh, want to so say much, that. so much. But, but I can't, can't find a way that they get out of this group. Because as I said to you, when we spoke on the phone the other week, it, Croatia is not a bad draw for you because they're quite an old, slow team, which will suit Canada's fast style on the counter attack. However. Their midfield is going to be Marcelo Brozovic, um, Modric, who apparently is not affected by time. 37 years old. And Kovacic. Yeah. So despite the fact he's 37, he's still playing like he's 27. Shit. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah. And I, I just look at that midfield and I can't, I can't pick you to beat Croatia now. What if we... So, yeah. I've, what, what if we clone Alfonso Davies? Ten times. Just our oh, yeah, entire team legends. is just Alfonso Davies. Is that is that possible? We've already got him playing up top, so why not cut a full hole? <laughs> he coach, he could fucking be nets. <laughs> <laughs> I love that term. <laughs> um yeah, look, if you had eleven along Alfonso Davies, this would be a different discussion. You could have a you could have eleven John Davids as well. That would probably Yeah, like, yeah, he's pretty fucking good. Together. <laughs> Twenty two chill. But, um yeah, look, the, the Canada team is really it, it is very good. It's a generational team, like with uh, Sile Larin and Atiba Hutchinson. If he's fit, Sile, his name is Kyle. Sile. No, it's Kyle. Where'd you see the fucking? Where'd you see the K in that name? It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard C. <laughs> like cunt. there's no such thing in the English language, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Put some respect right. on this man's name. Anyway, <laughs> regardless of however you pronounce his first name, I, I, I think you'll get a draw against Croatia, but you're going to lose to Belgium. Okay. Belgium are going to top the yeah. group. I think Belgium might draw with Croatia. That gives Croatia five points. Everybody's going to beat Morocco because unfortunately I've looked at it and I actually am really hardly against all of the African teams. Wow. That's racist. Them, yeah. and I don't want that to be, well, well, I don't, I was going to say, I don't want it to, to look like that, but just their confederation is very, very weak. Their teams are very poor. When you watch the African cup of nations, it's normally not very good. And I don't see any, I don't see any reason to back the African teams that have made the tournament this year. I'm, unfortunately, I'm really not uh, looking forward to your uh, take on my home nation of Ghana. Oh, shit. This, time. <laughs> this has been a running joke since 2006. <laughs> yeah, you're just an uh, albino, uh, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Slowingism, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, like, there's no, there's, there's no Nigeria. There's no Algeria. Yeah. yeah. There's no Egypt. These are, these, are, these are probably better sides than the ones that are qualified. Again, as we said about Peru. You can't really make that argument if they haven't qualified, but they're good and they would have had a good tournament. They didn't make it, so they're irrelevant. But the African sides that have qualified, I don't rate any of them. That includes Morocco. So I think Canada get three points. Wow. But that'd be, that'd be a huge win it, for us, right? Kind of five. set us up for the next World Cup. If you come third in this group and get 
three, four points. There's no no shame in that whatsoever. Yeah, no, but there's so, always so. the the the, but, the opportunity I, of becoming that Cinderella story. And I just feel like Canada. N- we haven't been in the tournament since 1986. So I feel like a lot of other, like, I feel like across the world, if Canada goes a bit further than they should, we're, we're kind of that Cinderella team that you're, you're kind of cheering for like, Oh yeah, that's, it's, it's cool for them. Nobody's yeah, watching, never, but it's okay. Yeah. The, never scored a world cup goal. Yeah, uh, by the way. Look, I'm going to get off the mark on that one. Well, maybe they could be the lowest scorers. <laughs> Is it possible to get negative? Watch yourself. Oh, what would yourself that, saying uh, that shit? They've got that. Future, I have feelings too, you know. They've got that future. They've got that future host thing going on, haven't they? So they're going to get a few deal with Qatar, yeah. two penalties a game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the USA somehow. No, I, any any disagreements on that? Belgium, Croatia, one, two. Um, no, no, Belgium, Croatia, for sure. To be honest, though, I did have Morocco doing Canada. Hack, just just yeah. Hakim Ziyech by himself is an absolute phenomenal player even though he can't run more than two miles an hour well, he never heard of it was incredible never heard um of him. oh he's, he's phenomenal I, maybe i say this just because i watched him tear chelsea and spurs a new arsehole in the Champions league a couple of years ago or moving to the premier league and then doing it to us again he he's very hot and cold this though. is true like if he played 10 games i'd expect to see him play well once or twice and be irrelevant for the other eight i think that's so he might he might not show up for any of the free games. It's completely I possible. I think uh, this may be his sort of rep since joining Chelsea, but I feel like that's just the toxicity of Chelsea more than it is him. So you look at him at Ajax, he was, he was incredible. Interesting. All right, let's move on to Group G. So Group G has Brazil, the tournament favorites, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. So Brendan, what do you Ooh, think? Yes. Buddy? Um, I mean, no real tension here. I mean, Brazil are absolutely smashing this group. Um, I've got, yeah, so I've got, I've got Brazil topping it. I've got, um, I have got, I've got Switzerland coming in second place. Um, interestingly enough, actually, shit, I wanted to ask you this because you're, you're Mr. Brazil nowadays. Um, we're hearing quite a lot of stories in, uh, in the UK. <laughs> yeah, we're hearing quite a lot of stories in the UK that there's quite a lot of uh anger in brazil over the fact that martinelli's been picked over for me now just, is that is any of that true or is this just the the uk media i haven't heard any i haven't heard anybody yeah mention. so so um the two things people are annoyed about is an absolute uproar that danny alves has gone to, just because he's old at first well, he's 30, yeah and he's playing yeah. like shit he's been awful in mexico he's 39 years old he can't play twice a week why is he mm-hmm. going um so i kind of i get the anger with that one um, and the other one that people are talking about is that Gabby Gol, who plays domestically here in Brazil, was not picked for the squad. People are more and more s- talking about that than the Firmino, than the Firmino thing. What about Martinelli? Because Gabby Gol's got a very good goal record, and she's, she's kind of like a recognised, prolific number nine, uh, who's got an okay record for the national team as well. Won the Olympics in, Bra- in Brazil. The- they do really value that uh, playing in the domestic league as well. I remember many years ago when Alana moved back there purely to play the national team because they were trying to remove anyone who was playing outside of Brazil. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good league. It it, do, it dominates the continent. Yeah, it's it, it it's some of the teams are as good as some of the European mm-hmm. teams. I'm not saying anyone would go out and win the Champions League, but there's a couple of teams here that would be competitive in Europe. Clearly, Gallo as well. Gallo, not this year, maybe last year. I mean, last year, yeah. Gallo. I still live in the past, buddy. It's, 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 a, we've, yeah. we've got a good squad. A lot of guys, you know, keep their head up in the corners, you know, just dump and chase. <laughs> dump and change, dump and change. <laughs> so what, what have you got for Group G? Anyway? So I've got, I've got Brazil topping it. Um, and then, uh, we've got Swiss in second. Uh, Cameroon, I've actually got in third place ahead of Serbia, just because I feel like wow. Nikola Milenkovic is going to get himself sent off and absolutely throw at least one of these games. He's uh, the dirtiest player going into this tournament, yeah. and I, I see him picking up a couple of yellows and a red across these three games and just kind of <laughs> losing his head. This guy, he's a hothead. I, I, yeah, John, what I didn't even, I didn't even yeah. notice, but this is what he's been fucking, uh, has been plastered across, um, across their sort of like news bulletin when you're look, looking up Serbia. Not, nothing about Dusan Tazic, nothing about Mitrovic, who is, to be honest, a really talented striker as well. Mitrovic has got an injury. Is he, is he going though? 
this game. He's going, he's one of these. not expected to be fit for at least the first yeah, game. I think this is a big one. Did Kosovo make the uh, World but Cup? They've got. But they wouldn't be in Group G, not... that's for sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that would have that that would have taken away like the political title from Group yeah, B, wouldn't it? Sure. Yeah, that's yeah, Sid, Sid, what do you think? Big, uh, big statue of Bill. Cl Big statue of Bill Clinton in Kosovo. <laughs> <laughs> Is there one of Epstein too? Or? Yeah, they got a big stick. No, no, just, just Clinton. I tried to get a picture of me sucking him off, but it was a bit high up. <laughs> okay, <now. laughs> That's one to show the grandkids. The Lewinsky. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, no, I don't, don't disagree with uh, Brennan on any of this, actually. I've got Brazil first. Switzerland second, Cameroon third, Serbia fourth. I love this Serbia side. Yeah, with Vlahovic up front and um, Luka Jovic is going as well. Um, Milankovic, Savic. This is this 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 is a cracking team, but they just always implode at tournaments. Yep. Their tournament record is absolutely. They draw the opposite of Mexico. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Tadic is going. Yeah, I, I I've got about eight tabs up of different squads but i can't oh there's this yeah tadic is going yeah. luka jovic is going yeah he's uh, gr Vladic great players. is going mitrovic is going yeah of course philip kostic is going as well um maximovic is going team team stacked mm. yeah realistically you could you could argue that they've got the second best team in this group but they will implode serbia never do well at tournaments so i'm not backing no. them for that reason but yeah this brazil team is stacked um it's winning the group Switzerland, I actually have got to get out of this group unbeaten. I think they're going to get five points. That's good, big they job. draw with Brazil? Switzerland tend to be very... I've got them drawing with Brazil. Wow. They're very hard to beat. And their record, their rec, their record against... Um, their record against top sides is quite respectable. They knocked France out of the Euros, didn't they? Wow. They have... Uh, so... They've got history as well of raising their, yeah. raising their talent through the use system of the national team as well. They're really good at that. They've done it for years. I mean, Sobo still there now came through as a, like an under-17. Yeah, you know, they're not these people just picking them from their from their domestic leagues in Europe. When it comes to world wars, yeah. they're fucking neutral. But when it comes to World Cup, they're on the offensive, people. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boys, hold, hold on a sec. I've got uh, I've got Switzerland squad here as well. Yeah, so you've got Jan Sommer in goal as always. Manuel Kanji is going. Ricardo Rodriguez is still there. Fabian Shah, who's having a great season. Yeah, you've got. You've got Shakiri, who I know Brendan's a big fan of. Cube. Yeah, I'm more of a Shakiro guy. Cracking season. Oh, who isn't? Ruben Vargas. Hips don't lie, baby. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> that went straight over my head. For <laughs> Gerard PK, maybe. Maybe not her biggest fan. But... Uh, Bril Mbolo as well. Bril Mbolo's come on a long way in the last couple of years. This is a good side. They deserve some respect. I've got them. I've got them down as quarter finalists. Switzerland. Granit Xhaka, which is, is a... truly playing unbelievable at the moment. Like he is absolutely solid in Arsenal. Yeah. As much it pains me to say it, he is phenomenal for Arsenal at the moment. Yeah, he's he's going to drag that team to the quarterfinals. I'm telling you, that's a fucking bet worth placing. It's less entertainment value for us because he's lost his his like hot head, where he just used to just two foot people in the face if he didn't get his own way. Yeah, that, that, those are those are the Halifax <laughs> days that I've got now. He's a serious yeah. footballer again. Awesome. Let's get to the last group. Group H. Is that how you say it? Uh, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and the Korea Republic, the south of Korea. <laughs> yeah, make sure we we, we specify that. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> <that. laughs> okay. To be fair, North Korea have been to a couple of World Cups, haven't they? So. Kim Jong Un's a couple of the fucking one. head coach, eh? So CG, start us off, buddy. With with your experience uh, living in Portugal, like tell us tell us a bit about more about the group. This is another group where I've on my bracket I've had to decide it on goal difference because I've got two teams finishing with the same amount of points, but in an odd way because I think Portugal will beat Uruguay. However, Portugal are very good at doing really weird things and generally make things quite hard for themselves. They never make life easy. You saw it when they won the Euros, actually. Yeah, they, they always go about things the hard way. They sit back, they they concede goals, they have to come back to win games. They don't beat teams comfortably very often. So I actually think they're going to lose to Korea. Whoa! 
Yeah, I've hero picked Korea. The South of Korea games. is going to win. That I've got them dropping a dropping two points there. I haven't got them losing. But yeah, so he's taking it one step further than me there. Did you? Did uh, what? Well, also against yeah, Korea? Portugal to drop points against Korea. That's interesting that we both picked that game yeah. out because there's not a lot of reason why people should be picking it out. I mean, Sun Sun will be back. Yeah, by it's, then. Ju it's just that Portugal. Even if though, isn't it? The first or this second. is it. As you say, it's it's it, yeah. What they're about? It's a very por it's a, it's a very Portugal thing I to do. I think this team is really going to struggle if they insist on playing Ronaldo up front as well. Which, which I will. Because, yeah, well, because he's not in form. I mean, he, des he deserves respect as one of the greatest to ever do it, but he's not in form. You can't, no. you, you can't expect to go the distance in a World Cup when you're, when you're out of form, uh, especially at 37 years old. I mean, old. He's, he's 18 to 1 to be top goal scorer, and I'm, that is not a good bet. Those odds are not nearly long enough in my, no, I wouldn't, in my eyes. That's, wouldn't, even, wouldn't even need no. to clean it. I, I, I wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't even top score on the team. No, Jao Felix, Fernandez, you got Silva there, bit of Ruben Neves. Uh, I'd probably, I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably look at Fernandez. Yeah, it's not bad, Jao. As a, as an interesting bet to top score in that Portugal side. I don't know what odds you can get on that, but that would be, that'd be something to look at. I think. What about Pepe? There? As always with Portugal. <laughs> as always with Portugal, they've got a few weaknesses. For example, in defence, um, no, Ruben Diaz is quality. Actually. Oh, phenomenal. But who partners him? It probably is going to be Pepe. Yeah. I love Jean Cancelo. I think Jean Cancelo is probably my favourite footballer. He's an absolute delight to watch. Do you ignore his red card the other week? Um, he has had probably his best season yeah, in professional it's, football it's, to date. Yeah. So they are they, they are a phenomenal team. I, I, I wouldn't say anybody was stupid to back them and say that they could, they could really go the distance. They're a serious side. But they do do stupid things, so I think they drop points to Korea, and that probably stops them topping the group. Um, because even if they beat Uruguay, they won't thump Uruguay. So, yeah, that means Uruguay could probably sneak through. I've only got your boys Ghana getting a point. I think they get that point against Korea, which means Korea can't go through anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're talking about a lot of complications in this group. It's not, uh, it, it's not particularly straightforward, what I've predicted. But, yeah, if, Port and if Portugal comes second... That leaves them playing, at least in my bracket, Brazil. Yeah, that's a good draw. Nearly everybody's because nobody's not nobody nobody's not picking Brazil as the winner of that group. No, exactly. I would hope not. And Brazil are better than Portugal. Brazil Brazil's midfield is a little questionable. Um Brazil, Portugal, Portugal shouldn't would there be would, wouldn't them. there be some bad blood there with the Portuguese link? <laughs> not no, I I highly doubt it. Maybe maybe fifty years ago, it's like the U.S. playing England now. People joke about the colonialism, but it's not fun. Okay, well you say it's, that, it's more but the, what, what people make up of yeah, yeah. The USA see, seem to see that as their as a sort of derby game. Maybe they're just trying to create history where there is none. Yeah, it might be that. Just yeah. the Vietnam War um, all over again. We've got a poor record against the U.S. as well, actually. <laughs> yeah, because you're Vietnam, aren't there? <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, let's not go back into Group B, but we've got a poor history against the U.S. Yeah. Uh, Uruguay, I like. I, I like. Uruguay, because they always seem to do reasonably well at World Cups, despite having about a population of about five people. And Suarez, all of whom are Suarez, pressured, it seems. yeah, Diego Forlan, <laughs> Alvaro Recoba, Cavani, yeah, and now players. Nunes. Cavani's going. Yeah, I know. Well. That's crazy. Yeah, Cavani and Suarez are both going. They've got Fernando yep. Buslero going in goal as well. This is they've actually got the same team they took in two thousand six. I think if you look at it, <laughs> fucking phenomenal. That's cool. He's swap out. Swap out wouldn't swap out Darwin for uh, Diego Forlan, you're there. <laughs> I think they just need a, oh, they just need Martin Kakaris back as well. Um, no, Diego God, Diego God is going as Martin Kakaris is going. That was a joke. Is he going? And Diego Godin. Martin Kakaris and God, Diego Godin. Are going. Holy oh shit! My God. The, av the average team of this, the average age of this Uruguay team is about forty. Surely they can buy days. Well, well, somebody yeah, might, <laughs> somebody might fucking die on the field. Let's talk about that. Oh, like natural, just, just natural death, just being too old. <laughs> <laughs> natural causes. I, 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 I'm starting to think now because I, I know experience is valuable in a World Cup. But I'm, start, I'm starting to think Korea could turn them over now if Sun is fit and fat. The boys and they've got that. They've, oh. they've, they've got that. They've got Kim. Kim. I mean, Min, they knocked out Germany out of the Napoli last World well, Cup. South Korea in the group stages, yeah. two 0 They've got that Napoli centre back as well, Kim yeah. Day, who's uh, who's excellent. So this, I'm starting to think Korea could upset Uruguay. That's been the whole thing around. Okay, boys, boys, because I think that would... I think that 
Korea is going to be the official two beers to take off wagon. We're fucking riding with Korea, boys. The south of Let's Korea go. is going to make it out of the fucking group. <laughs> Sun Huang Min, by the way, 117 to 1, top goal scorer. Chris. If he's fit for the first uh, game, it could be Nunez. If he's not fit for the first game, I wouldn't look at it. Nunez, on the other hand, 66 to 1. I don't think that's a bad of you. Not interested. No. If they're going, if they're going, say they're getting to the quarterfinals and he's starting. I see him getting girls. Well, I, I think whoever come, whoever, whoever, because I said to you, I like Switzerland. I think whoever gets out of this group first and yeah. second, they go out in the next round anyway. <clears throat> so I'm not that yeah. worried about it. But I'm going to stick with Uruguay, Portugal for now. But I actually think I, I do have doubts. Uruguay. You've... Yeah. If we're, if we're riding with Korea, follow your heart. If we're riding with Korea, I'd actually take Portugal. Portugal, Portugal tops it, Korea comes second. Uruguay, Uruguay was Europe. first, they've been knocked straight back down to third. Yeah, talk myself <laughs> out of that Martin Kakos pick. Yeah, this is always going to be a weird group. Yeah, that's it, I'm knocking, I'm knocking it in. Portugal, Korea, 1-2. Yeah, Joe, Portugal, 33, 33 for 2 to win. Uruguay, 50 to 1. South Korea, 350 to 1. What? Yeah. I mean, they're not going to fucking win it, but... It's... Ghana, only 400 to What's 1. What's the odds on them getting to the court? What's the what's the, what's the odds in them getting to the quarters? Right, that's a that's a good bitch. Yeah, check for I'll the South of you. Korea. I've got I've got elevens. Elevens. That's. Uh, I think that's about. Do you know what? That's about right. You, you can't say it's great odds, but at the same time, if it's a no, it's not. It's not fucking. It's not fantastic no. odds. It doesn't. It, I'm not rocking a semi. No, I think I, I probably it, it's fair. Right, those are the groups. Okay, so, so, so do, you, listen, do you disagree? What's your pick so on So I, I, we, we've done the groups. Can you guys maybe just, now that we've gone through them, what is the weakest group? Well, statistically, I'd have to say H, because as I said to you, whoever, go, whoever gets out of that group is going out in the next round, in my opinion. All right. And then who's this? Who should be honest? Our, group B is, is apart, from, B, I, apart from England... All of them I'd see getting, yeah, getting absolute, yeah. absolutely spanked. Yeah, I, 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 A and B are both piss poor. That's why one, one side of the draw looks better than yeah. the other. That's what I was saying. If Spain comes second, it will actually suit them because you end up in that weaker side of the draw. You're worrying about teams like the Netherlands and England and whoever are coming behind those are not strong That's teams. I've um, actually got Germany coming second in that group here and because of that, going all the way. I say, say all the way, getting further in the group. They don't... Spoiler alert, they don't go all the way. But I, think, I think that's why a lot of people have got Denmark down as dark horses, because they're in the kind half of the draw. Yeah, and that group is very kind as well. As you say, two of them are just dead runners. There's such a gulf between the top two and the bottom two. Yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, they will be in the kind half of the draw if they, if, if they yeah. win it. And they did beat France about six months ago now. Mm. Home and away as well, I think. And they've got, they've got a man who literally but, returned from the dead. They have. Yeah. Joe? Yeah. That happened in the middle of my uh, my brother's wedding. I was so drunk, all I could say to him was, well, this oh, this fuck. brings the mood down a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then my next brother's wedding, the Queen died, so that was great news and all. Oh, wow. you got a great yeah, record. You haven't got any more brothers to get married soon. <laughs> One's engaged. <laughs> <laughs> is he? Mm. Brennan, when are you getting engaged? Oh, hey, you guys, I just, I just noticed something. Uh, where is Italy? Oh yes, <laughs> Italy. I didn't, I didn't hear that. The audio. Where, where's Italy? <laughs> well, they weren't invited. <laughs> they got they got done by they got they got done by North Mac. Yeah, that it was, was in, that was in incredible. Class. That was incredible. And then who was it? They lost to was that Port Portugal? Was it Portugal? Yeah, North Macedonia. Yeah. Had one nil up in that game as a. Insane. Was it was it one nil two one one nil? We won that game, wasn't it? Like, it was it was that. incredible scenes. Absolutely incredible. But yeah, basically what we did is we created a new group chat and just just didn't use the old one anymore. And they're still waiting on a on a text, but here we are in Qatar. Right on. So boys, this is this is the part of the the, the podcast where we give the listeners a bit of value. We're going to give you our some of our best bets on you know we have two two guys who fucking religiously follow this shit and they're gonna give you two of or some of their best bets i'm gonna give you one of my best bets which is just basically 
from me listening to this podcast. I I I, I don't I don't know shit. So don't tell mine. It might win though. Who fucking knows? Mine's mine's like yeah, it's, go it's, for it. It's, it's out there. But anyways, Brendan, do you want to start us off with your some of your best bets? Yeah, Take exactly. some people I've got, some I've money. Got, I've got um. If you fancy Brazil, as I said earlier, Brazil are in fine form. I think they've uh, they've not lost in um in fifteen games. Um, but Neymar, a Neymar top goal scorer, and Brazil to win the entire tournament. That double that sits at sixty eight to one. Which I think wow. if, if Brazil are gonna if Brazil are gonna win it, you you're expecting Neymar to get goals. But um, it, it, when, another when one. You, do- Brendan, I'm just asking just for, for some of the listeners who might not know, but like if you're picking top score, does that include the entire tournament? It's not just like the group stage? It's, yeah, the entire tournament. That would okay. be seven, seven games. But the, the only other person I think would uh, might pip him to top goal score if it's going to be a Brazilian player who's a player who's actually at 33-1, to one, who scored six in his last five for Brazil, and they love throwing him up top is Richarlison. He's not in, not in great form in the league, but he's absolutely smashed it for Brazil. That's that's interesting, actually. I I'm much more interested by Richarlison. Yeah, than I mean that, that was because Teach because it seems like it's a value Tichy's pick. Got this problem that yeah, because Teach has got this weird thing where he's trying to shoehorn forwards in yeah. the team, but without actually letting them attack, because they played a four three three the other week and Neymar was in the midfield free and actually did sit that's in the crazy. midfield. They love a bit of flair. Don't that they? is crazy. That's, Love the player. Right, but that also means that Neymar's not going to be that close to mm. the goal. It's going to be hard for him to bang in five or six in yeah. the tournament if they end up using that kind of system. And this is that's what we sort of agreed on. Richarlison, regardless though, uh, five or six. Richarlison will sit at number nine. Yeah. So, yeah, five or six is going to be what you need. We know that. Richarlison will sit at nine. So I think that's a good pick. Mm. Uh, and Allison Golden Glove at five to one is is also a good thing to to boost your boost your acker. With that man of attacking prowess, can you see him really having to defend all that much? I mean, I looked at that defence and didn't think it was that strong, but you were, you were saying to me yesterday, said that you actually have quite a lot of faith in that Brazil defence. Yeah, they're, they're not overly exciting at fullback. We already mentioned the Dani Alves yeah. issue, but they'll probably be playing um, maybe, maybe Danilo and Alexandro, who five years ago were a good pair. These days, they're not so great, but they are defensively reasonably okay yeah. and then the two center backs marquinhos and tiago silva are awesome yeah uh, they're they're a good a center back pairing as you've got in the whole competition yeah you don't necessarily need to attack so if you've got so much attacking prowess on show you don't really need your forward forwards uh fullbacks to be bombing forward like alexandra would have done say five years ago yeah which is probably why it's not such a loss for them to have two what are basically now defensive minded yes yeah. but uh if you want to go brazil all the way Brazil to win, Allison Golden Glove, Richarlison top goal scorer, and Neymar to get the golden uh, golden ball. It's a measly seven thousand nine hundred and twenty to one. Let's go, better house. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, that's that that's absolutely wild. <laughs> that's I mean that's worth mm, that's worth a pound um, surely. Might as that's well like, though, no. It's, uh, it's worth worth yeah, it's like twenty can Canadian dollars. Yeah. <laughs> your queen's on your queen's on my fucking money for now <laughs> Sid what are your best bets right I've actually just looked at something that I found quite interesting do you remember I said earlier about Japan haven't taken any decent forwards yeah and the Costa Rica don't concede many and Spain and Germany are probably just going to dick them both Japan to be the least productive team or sorry score the least goals for some reason it's written as least productive on mine it, it's 17 to 1 17 to 1. If Costa, if Costa Rica are only paying 8.5, I'd probably take it double the price to take Japan. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. Because Costa Rica don't concede many, and you're talking about that being the only game where they're going to really feel like they're likely to yeah. score. Yeah, they're, the, they're in the Rica same group, many, right? So... so they're going to be... Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, the, 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 the only thing that would stop that being a, a great bet is you do have to wonder where is Saudi Arabia's goal going to come from? Yeah, I mean, because I'm not, sh- I'm I'm not sure about them. Scoring. I mean, Saudi Arabia is playing I like what, like odds... five games right before the tournament. Maybe they sneak one in, you know, early. Six, isn't it? Or yeah, mm. six games. Like like they're playing a shit sh- crazy amount of games right before the yeah, tournament. Right, like... I, maybe that works. I don't know. I think maybe they're just trying to get their get their FIFA ranking up. Like Qatar have just have moved up to FIFA rank fifty by playing the likes of Panama, 
and Guatemala. Like, who gives a shit about that? But it's got them up to top 50. Saudi Arabia are actually paying 10 to 1 to be the lowest scorer. 10 to 1, that's not bad. So I might, I, I'd probably take Japan. I'd take, ja I'd, take, I'd take Japan and Saudi Arabia. And you're talking about your bet pays like seven and a bit. Yeah. And you've got two choices. I could, I could, I can definitely see one of those going out without scoring. So I'm pretty happy with that. Well, take, just... In terms of winners, I said my good bet earlier. I'd take anybody from Group E to win it. Um, I found it hard when I was doing my bracket earlier to knock Argentina out because Messi is coming into this in great form. Their team looks extremely balanced. Is it his last uh, World Cup? Um, do you guys think? Uh, well, um, yes, I think so. Basically. As I said earlier, if he gets all the way to the final, oh, yeah. it could be his 1,000th professional game of football. It's just fairy tale stuff, isn't it? She's already retired from international football twice as well. I don't see any way. Twice, I suppose, like five, five, six times. 2026. Might be, might be, might be twelve times. Yeah, then, probably retired since we started filming this. And then they they start <laughs> hosting the Copa America every year just so he could win one. Yeah, fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Anyway, he got he got one, so that's that's that monkey off his back, and he seems to be enjoying playing for Argentina again. Mm. They beat Brazil in a final in in that final. Yeah, last year. it's the last game Brazil lost because nobody nobody no nobody in Brazil seems worried about Argentina. People seem worried about France, and people seem worried about Germany. Nobody's mentioned Argentina. That here, you know, is, Argentina haven't lost a game in thirty five international games. That's fucking mad. It's absolutely mental. Um, yeah, I think other other than that, I've got England getting to the semis. Um, Let's go. So that might be worth a pick. Sorry, say that again. You, I've got England getting to the semis. Wow. You, got, you guys beating France. France. I thought you said because England can win it all. I was like, oh, oh yeah, wow. France. Oh, come uh, on. For the sim. That, oh, can't leave with my heart on that one. No, which only pays fives, which is not value for me. No, I, mean, I wouldn't take that. Okay, they're only 19 to 2 to win the entire the thing. Sid, yeah, move your mic closer to your face. Switzerland. Switzerland to get to the quarters, which is my dark horse, and that's how far I've got them going at the moment, is uh, four, uh, 9 to 2, basically, or 4.5. Yeah. 4.75, I think mean, it actually is, but, which is not phenomenal value, but. I don't see them having any issues getting out of the group. So you're basically backing them on one game at that price. Yeah. So it's fair. When you look at it like that, it's I not, it's not um, bad chap. Yeah. Other, other interesting calls that we made, I suppose, we should probably check our boys from Korea. Because how far, they, they're going out in the last 16 if they go through, aren't they? I think we're agreed on that. Um, if. Oh, who they play? If they, I mean, if they, if they top that group, they play Switzerland, yeah. They don't, they play Brazil. <laughs> yeah, they're stuffed. Yeah. That, that's why I don't really have any faith in whoever gets out of that group. Uh, to, yeah, to go, to go out in the, uh, in a round of 16 is four to one for South Korea. I like that. All to one. That's not I bad. Like that. They're going, guys, I said to you, who, group G is stronger than group H, fact. Yeah. By some distance. So they're going to be under, they're going to be underdogs. You'd expect them to lose. They've only got a knockout Uruguay. Mm. Four to one, I think it's a solid bet. In terms of top goal scorers, okay, we'll route through this quickly, I guess, because there's a million names. It's really difficult to pick. The actual winner of the tournament is difficult to pick anyway. Yeah. These teams are not as strong as, it's not like 2018, 2014. The winners of the last five World Cups, the five World Cups we've kind of old enough to really remember in detail, any of those five winners would win this tournament comfortably. Interesting. And I actually think most of the, most of the runners up from those five tournaments would win this tournament as well. The, mm. and like, if you look at that France side that didn't win it in 2006, if you look at um, the Dutch side of 2010, yeah. That was phenomenal. 2014. Oh. But the only side probably that wouldn't, I guess, was Croatia 2018. Yeah, the other nine, nine of the 10 finalists in the last five tournaments would be expected to win this tournament, in my opinion. Wow. So anyway, it's tough. Uh, maybe 2002 Germany was not a phenomenal side. But anyway, it's weak, so it's open, which means there could be a, an upset. Are you, before we do Golden Boot, I guess, is there anyone you see as a potential upset winner? Upset winner? 
I, I think I can chime in on this one. Uh, I'm surprised you guys actually didn't name him. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about Canada was planning to clone Alfonso Davies. So clearly he's going to win because he's... <laughs> Because there'll be eleven of them. If you say, here's a here's a question on that, Matt. If you if you clone him, say twenty times, is that twenty different players, or is that still count as one player? How many Alfonso well, Davies? Well, I mean, you just got to look at the score sheet. Pitch at once. Trish, look yeah. at the score sheet. What does the last name say? Right, it's Davies, baby. Let's go. <laughs> just have them all run, wearing the same number. Right. Just tense. Just run into the row, and they'll just think he's running really fast. <laughs> I love you, Alfonso. Back to the real, back to the real world. Only eighteen. <laughs> back to the real world. Only eight, only only eight teams have ever won this tournament. Yeah, mm -hmm. in history, we're ruling out Uruguay because they're crap. Yep. Though I do, I do kind of admire them for taking all of those pensions. Um, you're talking about. Are we going to get a new winner? Probably not. You've already narrowed it down to seven, and they're pretty much the seven favourites. Well, Netherlands. So even even though this should be, re they could be a new winner. Belgium. Do you, do you think the Netherlands are going to win it? Uh, no, they've got good. They've got a good side, but you know they finished second to Senegal, so England are going to batter them. But uh, Belgium, they've been threatening to do something for like over ten years now. Do you think that's ever going to happen? And that's no, that side ten years ago was better yeah. than the side they've got now. But they've got the Hazard brothers. They've got, their their time has come and gone. It's past. It's heartbreaking because for small nations like that, it is you do get this generation like with Iceland, and then it, who comes and it does go. Your population isn't big enough to sustain that on like a repeatable sort of level yeah so in, in, unless we really really are riding with korea there's no uh there, there's no way somebody from outside of that seven is winning this i just i can't even see I, I can only see one team from outside that seven get into the get into the quarterfinals really and they're going out so yeah hmm. I, I, there won't even be a, a surprise team in the semis as far as i'm concerned i don't think england get into the semis as a surprise no i think on on recent Should tournaments, be... I don't think it is, no. I don't have them getting that far, though. So, realist... realistically, I think Spain will win it, yeah, which is why I've got oh. that bet for Group E. But I think you could, you could make a genuine case for pretty much any of the bookies six or seven favourites. Mm. And I think any of the others, you're probably wasting your money. You'd be better off picking around. I think with, with Group E, I think whoever, whoever finished second in there is out straight away. Because they're going to play Brazil, and I can't see whoever finishes second in that group. They, I, they, they're going to go out to Brazil. You'd have to, they'd have to have a phenomenal game to neutralize Brazil. No, the, no, the winner would play Brazil in the quarters. No, sorry, sorry, the second place in that in that group would play uh, play Brazil, wouldn't they? No, they, um, no, they play Belgium. Is it Belgium? Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it'd be in, it would be in the quarters. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I've got Germany beating Brazil in the quarters. Germany beating Brazil. Brazil will go for me. Uh, yeah, I've Quartz got it the other way around. Wow. So I've got Brazil beating Spain in the quarters there. But yeah, anyway, that's 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 my winner. I'm taking Spain, mm. but I'm taking it as that bet because I think if Germany do come second, maybe they win it instead. It's... Who are you taking outright? I've got Brazil, you know. Wow. What a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you just like why? My only real my own, gonna have Korea. My only real surprise, really, is I've got Denmark in the semis. Denmark in the semis. Yeah. You'll have to break that one down for me. Oh yeah, wow. guys, I'm excited. Let, let, let's get into it. How does Denmark make it? Right, in the semis? so well, Denmark they're they're throwing second in their group, but they are doing Argentina in the round of sixteen. They are just they're sitting oh, compact, and they are absolutely they are stinking up that gap for a good eighty nine minutes. Get a couple of free kicks. You got Christian Eriksen delivering them. Pontus Janssen, the light of fucking uh, Tejas Jensen in the midfield. <laughs> well, once again, then them so with they, me. Does that have them? That plays in Senegal in the next rounds. I, I thought you had Senegal to win it all, no? Do your brackets? Senegal, as I said, Senegal are winning that Dude, group. You're... Dude, your bracket's more fun than mine. <laughs> I don't think it's correct, but it's more fun than mine. It's beating, they're beating USA. As I say, I've got USA doing Wales, Pippin Wales. Senegal doing them in the round of 16. Denmark doing Argentina. Denmark doing Senegal. And then getting absolutely humbled by Brazil in the semis. Interesting. Interesting. And then France would be in there. Well, there you go. Eight, well, which, again. Eight, eight, eight to one. Eight to one for people who want Denmark to get to the semis. I think, to be honest, is the, is the estimated. Is, I, you know what? As you said earlier, that price has been 
heavily reduced by the popularity of Denmark in the last four or so years. So I don't think they're a good bet, generally. I don't think the odds really justify the risk that you get. I, I wouldn't take it at that price. But if you've drawn it up in a bracket, you've got to back the bracket, oh. boys. You've got to back the bracket. Oh. I, 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 I called Euro 2016 right, and I called Euro 2021 right using the bracket. So back the bracket. Back the time. bracket, baby. Hashtag. Remortgage your property. Yeah. Back the bracket. Yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> I, I, uh, top goal scorers, I suppose, is that. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Sid. Go ahead. Top goal scorers, I suppose, is the only other major market we haven't really covered. You've got Memphis to pay at 26 to 1, yeah. if you like the Dutch, which is solid because he's going to start at 9. They're going to score goals, at least in the group. Messi at 13s, if you fancy Argentina, he's coming into it in the form of his yeah. life. Other than that, though, you've got literally dozens of players that you could make a case for. If you if you want Denmark to go to the semis, I think you've got to take Andreas Cornelius. I would not be doing that. I feel I feel even even if they get semis, I don't see him scoring more than probably six or seven goals. Fair and if not. you're expecting all of them you to be from one player, Morata. well, it's possible you can get Alvaro Morata at fifty to one. That's I, that's not bad. If you're if you're back in Spain, I suppose that's logical. The problem I have though with Morata is I think if he doesn't score the first game or two they might play Danny Olmo up top instead but they're taking Ansu Fati as well which means you'd be they are taking Ansu Fati as well you can get Ansu Fati at 66 to 1 I wouldn't take that though I think I think my bet would probably be Danny Olmo who's so far down the list I can't even find prices on him so it would probably tell you he's at least 200 to 1 yeah all right all right the, you, you could have a few sleepers. So, 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 boys, I just want to. Uh, so, we, we've talked about a lot of bets here. I want you guys to tap into your gut here, your gut feeling, and I want you to give the listeners your best bet. I don't care if that's value, if that's just, it's just something that's going to come in one hundred percent lock, lock of the tournament. What are your? I, I want Sid. I want one bet from you, and Brendan. I want one bet from you that the listeners can do. England to win the whole thing. Yeah. Lock. <laughs> don't, don't do that, guys. Don't do it to yourself. 19 to 2. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I suppose we're, we're ruling out hero picks here, aren't we? We're not talking about like Korea to beat Portugal nope. or, you know, we're not talking about whatever country, uh, like Canada to beat Croatia. We're not talking about things nope. like that. So I suppose I've got to go, I've got to go with my, I've got to go with my group E to win it. Okay. Yeah. Because I think group E gives you the best, the best sides. Okay. And Brendan, what about you, buddy? Group E to win. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking by that Richarlison at 33 to 1. I think Brazil. That's the bet of the tournament. I'm, I'm, I'm going your head. That. Wow. I'm putting a one on now. I think let's go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. You know, what it's a just guy. It's such, such long odds for someone who's going to play in that position. And I've so much faith in them going, even if they get knocked out, say in the semis, I, he's going to score at least like four or five by that time. Dude, if they get knocked out in the semis, they get the third and fourth playoff as well. Yeah, so and that's a goal fest games. every tournament. Now that's nil nil bullshit with getting the fucking right. final. Dude, I might ride I might ride I might ride that with you. I'm, I'm riding you know, both of those. And I'm also going to be riding this one. So I have it's a it's a five team parlay that pays thirty six point zero one times your money. Just waiting for an applause. Uh, so it's uh, Ecuador over Qatar in the opening game because we've all talked about how Qatar sucks. The only potential that could be it could be fucked up is because of the refs. Fuck the refs. Ecuador wins this game 1-0. England over Iran. You know, you said that there's going to be a lot of potential draws in that, but I feel like England versus Iran is the best versus the worst in that group. I've got Switzerland over Cameroon. At 1.7, I think just like we've talked, we we didn't shut up about Switzerland this whole. Go they they got to be. Yeah. They've got to beat Cameroon to get to where we've we, we we've talked about. Next, I have Brazil over Serbia at 1.44, and the last bet that makes it makes you that it's the bet that gives you all the money is. South Korea over fucking Uruguay. Five Come times on. your money, baby. Let's, Let's fucking uh, go. 
Uh, but Joe, you know I was wondering where the odds were coming from. You're doing that. It's like, yeah, that's logical. Yeah, that's logical. How, where's this fight she's come from? And then you whack out five to one career over Uruguay in the last, last bet. What are your thoughts? Yeah. I'm backing it. Love it. <laughs> she loved yeah, it. Yeah, riding it. Perfect. Let's. I actually might put in a sixth game. As, um, I might put in a sixth game with you as well because Croatia to beat Morocco is 1.85. I think that's free money. So wow. much, yeah, almost doubling your money there. Okay, well, can I can I steal that from you? Money. Just throw it in, in, into the accumulator. That's, over, that's 70, like 70, nearly 70 to one. You can, you can steal that, yeah. I'm going to steal it. So, folks, I've got an extra one. It just came into my head randomly. <laughs> 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 and we've got, we're going Croatia over Morocco. They've got the home field advantage. And it's 66.62. <laughs> I didn't, oh, I didn't realize this was Qatar and Dubrovnik <laughs> joint hosting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're doing a Game of Thrones episode there, I think. Um, I think, so, you know what? <laughs> I think something else to look at on these bets is these lowest goal scoring teams. Because you could pick, I was going to say, the, the shortest odds are 8 to 1. You could pick probably 4 or 5 and lump on, and you get them, you're still, still going to make money. a profit. And I don't see more than really 4 or 5 contenders there, really. The lowest score in this tournament. No, no me neither. Me neither. I think I'll probably double up on Japan and Saudi Arabia on that one, I mm. think. Okay. So, so boys, let's finish off the episode here with a top five. So what we're going to be doing is picking five teams to win the World Cup. The other two that don't get the team that's correct have to chug a beer on video and we're going to post it on our social media. And I guess if none of us get it right, we all have to chug a beer. And we'll post it on our social media. If none of us so, get it right, we need to I be look, ashamed. Yeah, we might just delete yeah, this episode. I look forward. I look forward to seeing you both in December for this. <laughs> all right. So I actually threw all our names in a randomizer, and first pick, and this is going to be snake draft. So we're going to be going from one, one to three, then three oh, back to one. Snake draft in the way. And what? We'll, and the first pick actually is going to be Brendan and Sid, and then it's Phil. So, Brendan, what is your mm. first pick to win this, the World Cup? It's Brazil. Heard of them? It's got to be. It's got to be. I backed them so much here. I can't not. Sid, what's your first uh, pick, buddy? Spain. Spain. Oh, no, he gets both in Group E. I see what he's done. Okay. So, I'm going to pick France. And my second pick. Let me just pick up the Vegas Germany. odds here. France. Germany. You think, they, you think they could retain? I really want to go Canada because I feel you guys might pick them in the next round. Nah, you're safe, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> but I'm going to go Argentina. Argentina. Nice. Not a bad bet. Okay, yeah. so we're going back All to right, sit here. I take, I take, I'll, take, I'll take Germany, as you probably could have expected. Yep. We've got Germany and Spain. And you got you got Argentina. Who's your first pick? France, yeah. France, yeah. France. France. Unfortunately, mm. you know what? Korea. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going Denmark. Not in the. Let's go. Oh, what in the second? Yeah. Second round pick Denmark. Oh my god. Listenership from Denmark's gonna go through the roof after that pick. Come on, come on, the Vikings, the Southern Vikings. Right on. So, Brendan, with with the the snake draft, you get the you get the first yeah, pick of the third um, round. It's it's got it's got to be the boys, the boys from England. Oh Britannia. my god! I can't believe that they they lasted this long. I'll be honest. I forgot they were there when I picked Denmark. Wow. <laughs> you picked Denmark over your home country. Wow. That's like the equivalent of picking Wales be, over fucking be, England. You should be hung for that. <laughs> you forget we were there. Stoned to death. Oh. I was distracted by the big the big dragon on Wales' flag. <laughs> right. Well, what interesting teams have I been left with? Oh, she won. Um, two, actually. Two. Really won. Oh, three. Yeah, I'll t none of them are previous winners, are they? I'll take uh, I'll take the Netherlands. Nice. Solid. They'll be stoned. 
Okay, so I'm going to do Belgium. <laughs> yeah, it's just I'm going solid to pick. Do... Well, it just feels like that they're... How many years have we say that Belgium's the dark horse to win? They're the dark... Yeah, it's... You know I mean? they're, they're, they've got that it's getting old ranking. now, isn't it? But it, it seems like it's, it's going to be their really last... Like a dark their last well, not their right? second. Second ranked in the world behind Brazil. It, it's funny because they've been a dark horse for so long that they don't even feel like a dark horse anymore. But they still haven't won anything, so they no. should be a dark horse pick, really. The team is so talented and has been for 10 years. I'm I'm going Switzerland. Pick. Nice. CG, back to you, baby. That was the... That, that we're we're into the fourth round. Fourth now, yeah? round. So first, so I have France, Argentina, Belgium. First pick of the fourth round is Switzerland. Sid has Spain, Germany, Netherlands. Brendan has Brazil, Denmark, and England. Did you watch the uh, last season of Peaky Blinders? No, I got bored by season <laughs> four. <laughs> Um, right, if they're good, if they're good enough to knock out Canada, they're good enough to go on a run. So I'm going to take Croatia. That's a strong pick, yeah. Mm. Right, right. I'm going to take the absolute head cases from Portugal. As, yeah, uh, that's yeah. I, when you said head cases, I thought you were going to. I thought you were just going to pick Serbia. Didn't you? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> <true>. Nikola <laughs> Milenkovic, come on, up you go. No, I'm talking pure Pepe. And the last one. Yeah. It's going to be... You know what? It's the boys. It's, it, we're going South Korea. Fuck you. Fuck you. I swear to God, if I could, on, if I could, go, if I could go through this screen right now, I would fight you. <laughs> Brendan's won it in the fifth. That's a fact. <laughs> Wow, throw away the I am well, upset. 350 to 1. You know what? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm punning. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually annoyed that I picked Croatia ahead of Portugal now thinking about it. I already regret that. Wow. Um, um right, in the fifth, fucking piss poor options left now. Serbia. I've got to at least pick somebody that I think's making it to the last 16. Serbia. So. <laughs> Serbia. <laughs> I've got voices in my head. <laughs> no, I, Take a, I take Equ I take Ecuador. Do you know what? They've, they've got good history, but seems to only be against other South American teams. They seem to do all right in South America. As soon as they leave the continent, they're dog shit. Yeah, you know what? Listen. No, oh, Qatar's close to South America. Correct. I thought I was sure my previous statement. It, it, they, they, do, they do seem to have the group to do it. So I, I'm really surprised that Brendan didn't pick Senegal, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. And listen, boys, I, 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 I appreciate the gentlemanly uh, move to not pick Canada. So on my last pick, I'm going to pick Canada. That's that's the only reason. It's purely for you. Yeah, appreciate it, yeah, boys. We left them for you. You and so, three hundred so to recap one, of Alphonso the Davies. Here's the the recap of the team. So Brennan picked Brazil, Denmark, England, Portugal, and South Korea. You fucker. Sid picked Spain, <laughs> Germany, Netherlands, Croatia, and Ecuador. Phil picked France, Argentina, Belgium, Switzerland, and the host, the next host nation, and the team that will per per probably win is Canada. That's just the easy, it's uh, the, the cop out with, uh, pick that, isn't it? Canada. We all could have gone with Canada. You know, they were going to win it. But... We just had to keep it interested and go for Ecuador and Korea. I, I felt like I, I had a little bit of an understanding of the teams, but this was really informative. I feel like South Korea are a fucking wagon. Denmark's a fucking wagon. Switzerland's a fucking wagon. <laughs> Senegal. Those, those, the Cinderella, like, I feel like we should do like a fourth team of just like, just the Cinderella teams. Canada, Denmark, Switzerland, Serbia, if you don't get fucking red carded out. But this was awesome, boys. <laughs> I feel like betting uh, guide wise, I feel like I know so much more and I know that the listeners will also appreciate this. So listen, thanks a lot, boys. Great to see you, Brendan. Brendan. Buddy, yeah, what, we don't see each other. It's my absolute pleasure. No, 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 it's true. We have to, it's been fun. We have to sort this out more often. Yeah, we got to have you on. Yeah. We, I'm going to have you on, on, a, on a proper happy hour here now that you've wet your feet. And Sid, of course, it's always nice to see you're looking a little less lazy than the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> Are you can take the shades off yet, or against yeah, all yeah, let's go odds, recovery bit. Uh, if you take your shades off, yeah. Like, yeah. 
How you do I look worse you than you fucking went on done? Done. Oh shit! Put him back on. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude! He's eight. What he's eight forty years. No, I don't even fucking know. Anyways, boys. Oh shit! Have a good one. The tournament starts in uh, what is it? Like in, six, six days? Is coming seven, out seven days. days. Four days until the 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 first game. Ecuador to take over Qatar and my fucking ticket. So ride with the boys. We'll be posting this on social media. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Back the bracket. Yeah, yeah. Back the bracket, Back the bracket Lump baby. On. Lump on. Thank you for listening to Two Beers Till Takeoff. Do you want free additional content or just to stay connected with the show? Then give us a follow on our social media platform. That means TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of them. Are you in need of podcast production services, video editing, or anything in between? Then look no further than Strut Sound Productions, the official producer of the Two Beers Till Takeoff podcast. Music produced by Alex Gagne. Check out his work in our show notes. Voiceover done by Viking Leo K. See you next week on Two Beers Till Takeoff.